we're going to talk about gross domestic product and national income and how the government counts how much stuff is being produced in our economy. Because there was a time when an economic advisor to the president would, would just basically say, well, it looks like the ports are busy and uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, people in the streets and the, it looks like there's a lot of business going on. And eventually, one of the US presidents in the uh, early 1900s said, I want you guys to count this stuff. I want to find a way that is standardized so that we know if things are getting better or if they're getting worse, I mean, you know, economically. And so they came up with a series of, of uh, measures. One of them is called gross domestic product. And one of them is called gross national product. And then there's something called national income. National income, let me write that out for you. National income, personal income. turn off my phone. Let's see. Let's see if I can get that on, turn down. There we go. Okay. Uh, national income, personal income, and disposable income. These are the main ones we're going to talk about as measures. We're going to start with uh, gross domestic product, and basically, I'm going to use the term stuff, but that means uh, uh, basically things we want to buy, right? But it, it, it measures new, so a used car is not counted this year because it was produced you know, five years ago or something. Uh, and even if you bought it used and it was made in this year, it would only be counted once for when it was produced new. So it's new, final, and there's more, but let's talk about final. The final product is measured, like your textbook. We count the textbook in GDP, but we don't count the resources that went into it. We don't count the, the raw materials like paper and glue and ink because we'd be double counting. If we counted the paper and then we counted the book, we'd be counting that paper twice, right? So now if it's sold as a final, if the paper sold as a final product to a consumer, we'll count it. But if it's sold to a manufacturer or a publisher, we won't count it. So it's the final product that's sold that counts. Okay? And let's see. Oh, market value. At market value, um, I'll put that in parentheses. Because really, um, we usually say the new final goods and services produced inside our country's borders. Now,
So I'm assuming this is the USA, but if you're in France and you compute GDP, then it's everything produced inside of France's borders, okay? And I need to say by anyone. So it doesn't mean, it doesn't have to be uh, what we call nationals of our country that produce it. So if it's a Toyota and it's made in a factory in Tennessee, it counts as part of our GDP. We used to measure gross national product uh, just as a side point, because the fact that gross national product and national income are closely related, closer related than, than those two. So we used to measure gross national product, which is almost the same. It's the new final goods and services, and again, it's at market value. produced by nationals of our country, so in other words, by Americans, if, since this is America, and I shouldn't be, uh, nationals of a country anywhere. Okay, so if we're talking about France, New final goods and services produced by the French anywhere. Okay, so and if we're talking about the USA, this would be produced by Americans anywhere. So we had started, we invented all these things. This was all invented in the United States and it, it spread throughout the world as we started uh, measuring this. Uh, industrialized countries were, were, were next and they said, oh, well, these are good measures. We're going to do this too. And then as we went into the un, un or lesser developed countries, we taught them these things. Most of the countries chose gross domestic product. And we were using gross national product because it's just easier. I mean, since we started, we went with the one that's easier to balance with national income. And uh, after a while, and this was way into my career, I mean, I learned about gross national product. I was, you know, using and teaching about gross national product. And then, boom, we changed. What was going on is some things in the world, some income was being double counted and some income was not being measured. Because think about this. Let's say, let's use France, I'm, since, I'm, since I'm talking about France. If gross domestic product is being measured by France, and we're using gross national product, that means that, let's see, uh, if someone from France produces something in the United States, and it's sold, it's, it's produced here, um, France is not going to count it, right? Because they will look at anything produced inside of France's borders by anybody. But since it's produced in the United States, they're not going to count it. And what about here? Uh, gross national product, are we going to count it? We're only going to produce, uh, count things produced by Americans anywhere. So whatever's being produced by this French citizen in the United States is not going to be counted by either country. Or if we had done it the other way, let's say an American goes to France and has a business and manufactures something. France will count it because it's inside their borders, made by anybody, right? And the United States will count it, so they'll double count. So we finally decided that since the majority of the world was using gross domestic product, we would change to gross domestic product. And then we had to go through and recalculate everything prior uh, we had been keeping some records, but uh, we had to, you know, go through and, you know, change a lot. But now we use gross domestic product, but it's just a good question to ask, so you'll understand. I might ask it on a test, you never know. That you might want to know the difference, mainly because 
I know some of you will be econ majors and you might go work on your master's or your doctorate and you might have to do research and it do, you don't have to go back very far uh, to find everything in the, in the old books talking about gross national product. You, you need to know what it is uh, because it hasn't been that long, at least in my lifespan, since we switched. A couple of decades. <sighs> okay. Okay, now, gross national product is at market value, which is a term that basically we can switch this off in a few minutes. You'll learn about nominal. In the next chapter, we'll learn how to switch things between real and nominal. Nominal means valued in this year's or that particular year that, that it's mentioned in this year's uh, dollars. There's something called real, which you could say is adjusted for inflation, but that's kind of a, a, a truism that's not exact in definition. Adjusted for inflation, basically what we do is we change, if you want something to be real, we change the dollars to a base year. Oops, you're not going to be able to see this. Here, let me see if I can swing this around so you can see what I'm writing on over here. Okay. <laughs> okay. We change the dollars to a base year, and then we can compare. Because of the fact that we have inflation or deflation, you've heard, you've heard parents or uncles or somebody, and you may have noticed yourself, that they say the dollar doesn't buy as much as it did last year or when I was young. And an example of that would be candy bars. When I was a kid, you could buy an Almond Joy for, or a Mounds Bar for four cents. Um, we could go to the theater, my parents would give me a dollar to take my baby sister and me to the matinee on Saturday. And basically, we could get in for a quarter and we could get popcorn and a soda for a quarter. So 50 cents each. Yeah. So that dollar bought what, how much would it cost to go to the movies now? In, in terms of movies and popcorn and stuff, so we're talking a dollar bought, what, $30 bought <laughs> in, in movies and popcorn and stuff like that. So what I'm, the point I'm making is a dollar back when I was a kid, if you, if you actually, they had a size, would be a big, big dollar, and a dollar today would be a small dollar because it just, it, relatively speaking, it just doesn't buy as much. But gross domestic product is measured in, these, in, the, val in the dollars of this year. So it's like apples and oranges. If we compare, did the, did the country produce more this year than it did 10 years ago? Well, we don't know as long as we're, it's just gross domestic, just gross domestic product, we don't know. Um, is it, uh, has there been inflation? Has there been deflation? So you can't just say 10 years ago GDP was 1,000 and now it's 2,000, the economy's doubled. Maybe not, maybe prices doubled and we're producing the same amount of stuff. So you really can't tell until you you look at real GDP. Okay? So let me give you an example. Well, before I do that, let's make sure you understand real. The next chapter, by the way, this is chapter eight in the textbook you're using in, in uh, this is spring 2017 that I'm, I'm filming this. And this is chapter eight. 
But when we get to chapter 9, we'll figure out how to compute these. We can, if we were to take the GDP values, we can convert them all to uh, one year, one base year. Whether it's 1983 or 1994 or whatever base year we choose. Okay? The main thing is we can take this, and I kind of joke about nuking it down. We nuke it down mathematically so that it has the value, uh, the number would be in the terms of the base year. So then we could compare 2017 with 2015 because they're all in the same size dollars. And we'll learn about that later. But just here's the example I was going to give you. There was an argument about what Ronald Reagan did to um, entitlement spending. And the politicians would argue, and I even heard professors arguing. And one would say, he cut entitlement spending. And the other would say, no, he raised entitlement spending. And they were both telling the truth. One was talking about in nominal terms, and one was talking about in real terms. In other words, in dollars, just nominal dollars, Ronald Reagan spent more every year. But because there was inflation, the value after inflation of the money he spent on entitlements went down. So you have to be, this is a clue to understanding politics and understand politicians. When they start telling you something about numbers, you can sound really smart if you say, is that real, are those real numbers or nominal? Because they mean different things. <laughs>